how farms work, controls in a 9510 John Deere combine. First and foremost, here's your throw or your ground speed controller. Forward, moves the combine. Backward, moves the combine. The controls on the handle are your head, raise and lower, kind of backwards from what you'd expect. Um, the down button is up and the up button is down. So this is your head speed. Um, you can speed up the back shaft on your head. You can speed up the corn head. If you have a reel head on it, this button uh, turns into the reel height adjustment and you can raise and lower your reel. So not all combines have this button back here. This is your contour master. It says it allows you to pivot your head left and right, varying on different ground conditions and where you're at in the field. Moving on, so this is we got your throttle. It's a three position throttle. Slow, mid range, and wide open, my favorite. All right, over here, this switch is your unloading auger. Ahead, swings it out, pushing it back, which I don't want to do right now, swings it back in. To start your combine, always have it in the neutral position. This is your unloading auger. You pull it out to engage your unloading auger, and you hear a nice little beep. Slow down the throttle. All right, going on around up here. If your cameraman can get it, this is your dilematic, um, your flexible bean heads in particular. It allows the bean head to flex, and it allows the head, the feeder house, and the combine to uh, free float on the ground, so you, so your head can follow the contour of the field because crops such as soybeans, um, they grow right down to the ground, so you have to run your head as low as you possibly can safely to get all the crop. As we all know, a crop that's still in the field after you're done combining is lost money. Um, here's one we don't use very often. Um, this is your real speed ratio to your, your driving, your uh, forward motion. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you uh, set this to increase or decrease your reel speed in relation to where your ground speed is. This is something we never use. Over here is your toggle switch for your feeder house. Pull out and up and engages your feeder house, which it won't do. If it did, it'd be really upset at me if I turn that on before you turn on. Your threshing unit. This is your toggle switch that engages the whole combine. If you can hear that, she just lurched alive. Oh, hold on, turn on the feeder house. Now it's freaking out because we had low speed. Yep, that's what that buzzer was because your engine speed wasn't cranked up with the threshing unit on because everything has to be running up to full speed otherwise you risk plugging your combine. It doesn't do that if you don't have your feeder house on but in the combine is sensing that you have the feeder house on with your threshing units on without your engine being throttled up. It tends to have a panic attack and it tells you to stop. Um, here, over here to the right again is your reel speed. Um, adjusts how fast your reel rotates as it's in the... It doesn't work for the corn head. But... Yeah, it doesn't work for the corn head. <laughs> if we had the bean head on, we'd be using it. I'd be showing it. Um, it just controls how fast. Think like a Ferris wheel. If you look at the size of a reel, it's like a Ferris wheel going around. And it controls how fast that goes around. 
Back here, this is a dead switch. This is previous owners. Um, here's your cylinder speed, your threshing unit. The crops get taken in from the feeder house and up into the cylinder. And the th cylinder is what threshes your crops, your corn, your beans, your oats, your whatever you guys are at. Um, over here to the right, goes along with the cylinder, is your cylinder, uh, your concave, I mean, your concave width to your cylinder, because every crop is different. And rounding out the list of switches is the fan speed. It blows out all the chaff and junk and whatever else you don't want to get mixed in with your crop. That should be about it. That's about it, unless you want to... We won't cover the displays or anything like that, but um, that's basically the essentials on what it takes to drive a combine. Uh, you got your gears over here that we didn't really cover. If you need to put it into road gear, you'll be using that knob to do so. And as long as you're in park, you can adjust it. Let's see, that's neutral. I pull back even farther for first, but I want to stay in second. And hell, I'm in road gear now, but. I usually run the second for when we're in the field. And this video is sponsored by Mountain Dew. <laughs> Not really sponsored by Mountain Dew, but. Hey guys, work for Mountain Dew and Company. We're looking for sponsors, so. <laughs> Other than that, if anybody else has any questions, just put it in the comments and we'll try to get back to you. So if you guys have any other questions, be sure to ask. Uh, be sure to subscribe. Be sure to tell your friends about how farms work. And if they're wondering how to drive a combine, or at least what the essentials are to get it to move, uh, reference this video. So uh, we'll see you next time, guys.